Hey everyone, welcome to tonight's live stream. This is our final part of the Onaka roof rack uh, assembly. So we got our solar panels here that we're gonna unbox. And then what we're gonna do, uh, had a question in one of the last live streams. Don't worry about all the behind the scenes details. I'm gonna make a video showing the video and some photos I've took behind the scenes that you guys have not seen in the live stream. So that's coming later. Uh, it'll be a short video, so you don't have to make it through all the live streams to look how to put this thing together. Um, this live stream is just to go over the solar panels that we bought. We're gonna lay out the frame onto this table. Uh, I built this table in the shop uh, pretty much the size of a Ford Transit van so that I can lay out roof racks, I can lay out flooring, um, anything like that that I want to do. So what's going to be cool is I'm going to lay out these solar panels, just how we're going to put them on the roof. And uh, we're going to set them up into three sections. So we'll have the 200 watts up here. We'll have the 55 watts here and then the 235s in the back. And if you're wondering how this is all being put together, uh, what we're doing is, let me hop on over to the computer. So this is the roof rack system that we're using. And it is a collaboration between Unaka and Explorus.life, uh, which is the YouTube channel you guys may have seen, uh, Nate over here on Explorus.life. This is his uh, YouTube channel. So we're gonna reference this schematic that he put together. Um, this shows how this system is supposed to be put together um, according to kind of what they thought up and worked together. So this is what it looks like in its final form. The whole entire roof of the Ford Transit is gonna be, uh, pretty much every square inch is gonna be used, which is really cool. You're gonna have the most efficient layout as far as a Ford Transit roof rack goes as accepting solar. Um, the two units grayed out here in the back. So one is the Max fan that you guys can see, and the other one is a Nomadic Cooling X3. Now for our customer in this build, we're doing an X2 and we're doing a 48 volt system, uh, which is brand new with the pneumatic cooling, and uh, it's gonna be awesome. Uh, we don't need the amount of BTUs of an X3. X3 is really, um, it's a great unit, but it's a little uh, overkill in the cooling, um, just for the uh, build that we're doing for this customer. So the good news is, it's gonna be a little bit, it'll be not such a tight fit in the back, so we'll have about two or three inches on each side, just a little bit more of a gap. Uh, however, I'm very curious to see the gap between the max fan and the AC unit. Um, but as far as the layout for the solar goes, uh, this is going to be a really cool roof rack. I'm, I'm really excited. If you guys have watched the other two live streams as we've been putting this together, um, this is very precise roof rack, so uh, I definitely recommend it at this point as far as how I've been putting it together. It's not a sponsored video, but I think if you guys are doing a DIY camper and you're looking around for roof rack options between Flatline Vanco, ABC Rig, and this company, Unaka, I really like uh, how it's put together. So well, without further ado, we're gonna get started on this assembly. So what we need to start on first is, yesterday we took the bars, uh, crossbars and we put them on there to make sure that our offset of the main rails was nice and true. So we checked it off of our list. So we've, un we've unpackaged three bars. The next thing we have to do is get the other ones out of the uh, wrapping and we're going to start doing this portion. So this is what we're doing. This middle section is what we're gonna be putting together. So let me scroll down. All right. So this is what we'll be referencing because this just shows how the hardware kit is supposed to go together. They give you a bunch of these bags uh, of hardware. And so we got two more left. These are the last two. And this is what's going to be used to assemble the solar panels to those frame members back there. I'm going to unbox this and then start laying everything out. 
If you guys have any questions during this live stream, it doesn't have to be on what we're working on in the background. It could be anything van related. Put that in the chat and I'll be happy to answer it for you. Um, yeah, but we have this and so my goal is that I'm going to be able to individually put these together and it looks like that's uh, what I'm going to be able to do. So what I mean by that is I can do one, these first two panels that are 200 watts. Uh, they're not extremely heavy, but they're more awkward. And uh, a lot of what I do here is solo building. So right now my plan is to put that on the roof um, without any assistance. So the first panel, second, and then these two back panels, we'll see how rigid that is. And uh, hopefully it's not, you know, floppy to where two people don't have to bring it up. All right, let's go ahead and start taking this apart. Once we unbox this, we're gonna go over some tools that you're gonna to need to wire this together. Uh, we have some MC4 connectors. We have branch adapters, branch adapters with connectors. We actually have these MC4 connectors. Uh, and I just have these out here so that if you guys do have a question during the chat, what we can do is hop on over to the uh, drawing pad and we can actually draw out and explain, do a little lesson on how to hook everything up if you guys are interested. Um, other than that, it's just going to be me undo, uh, undoing this and getting this organized for myself. So I want to bring you guys along for the ride while I'm doing this. And... Uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and lay this out. So the first two panels, we're going to start right here. And then we're going to grab this. So I'll be referencing this chart right over here to make sure I'm doing this right. So one thing I noticed in the instructions that's important is I was wondering where the three bars go because there's multiple bars. And if we scroll all the way up, there's a photo that does show you that. So it's not this one. It's a bigger photo. Let's see if I can find it. This one. So we have a skinny plain bar in the front. Uh, then the second bar back has the holes in it with the slots. Then there's another skinny bar. The next one is the second bigger one, skinny bar with a two notches, notched out large one, and then the two last ones are the small skinny bars. So yeah, I'm gonna leave this up and then we're gonna, gonna get the solar panels out first. One reason I really like this uh, setup and decided to recommend it for the custom build that we're doing is because one, it maximizes the roof of a Ford Transit, which sometimes can be challenging, especially if you're putting in an air conditioning unit or and or two max fans. And so this solves all those problems, but what it also does is, one thing that's challenging about current roof racks on the market is the width. So, most are not wide enough to accommodate large panels, as in like this 200 watt. So what you have to do is you have to uh, you have to compromise on how much power that you're putting into your van build. And with solar, if you are going to go the solar route, you always want to just you know, my opinion is always maximize the solar as much as you can. So you can get a benefit because uh, solar is not you know magic it's not there's not a lot of amperage and current so having a big solar array is going to you know make it actually a usable system instead of just a uh, kind of like a trickle charge for your for topping off your system
These things are packaged way too well. I guess that's a good thing, but man. So trying to destroy all of the box. So keep the big, uh, a big portion of your box when you have solar panels. You're gonna to wanna to have that so that you can actually, uh, you know, turn off the solar panel because the solar panel is always on. So what you want to do is keep stuff like uh, this piece of foam so you can lay on top of it or the best thing is to have uh, the cardboard box itself to kind of turn the light off. Uh, just, you know, just to keep things safe while you're working on it. Um, so for this one, what we're probably going to do is we're going to have, we're going to keep this foam and we're going to flip this upside down so that we can mount the rails on it and have, have a way to work on this before, while we're, uh, putting everything together. So yeah, just take your foam, solar panel. Well, you can move it around without scratching it. All right, I guess so the first panel, and then we have our rail. And what's so nice about this collaboration is the holes are pre-drilled in the rail, perfect. Solar panels are perfect. And this is gonna be, I can already tell this is gonna be excellent. Uh, very enjoyable install.
In a little bit, we're gonna talk about how we're wiring all of these solar panels together. So one thing we're not doing is we're not wiring these all in one bank. They're gonna be three separate banks. Then they'll be merged into one bank going to the uh, solar charge controller. And that is because we have different voltages on the panel. Uh, they're obviously, you know, different wattage, different size. Now I'm gonna bolt these together and I need, I wanna make sure that all of the uh, MC4 connectors are all on one side. Makes it easy, much easier to hook up. Two rails per side, so we can do these individually, which is gonna be really nice. Um, and because they have the T-nuts into the 8020, we'll be able to kind of slide them in, which will be pretty nice. Uh, I actually haven't put the fairing on that we built yesterday on yet, because I wanted to find, I wanted to see how I wanted to slide this in. I, you can lay it in and then try to find the T-nut or you can mount this together with the T-nut as one unit and slide the whole panel in and then just tighten it down. Um, you should be able to just put the T-nut in and then kind of find it, kind of wiggle it around to find the nut. But if you have a hard time doing that, you might want to maybe change the approach. So the next ones we have are these uh, notched out pieces. These are for our 55 watt panels.
So these don't have a foam pad. So what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna use the box. Something pretty unique about this, uh, other than it being as custom as it is, according to one of Nate's videos, Explorers.life video, the 35 watt and the 55 watt panels are one off. So they didn't exist until this collaboration happened because um, there wasn't these, these panels weren't on the market to actually encase uh, what was being worked on, which I think is really cool. These are the wrong orientation, so I need more, need more room on the table. So these go like, like this. I'm gonna orientate these this way because I don't. There's a skinny part of the rail, and I want the. I'm gonna zip tie the cords to the thicker part of the rail when I do my wiring. So I'm gonna put the box towards the top.
a screwdriver over here so I can get these boxes open. And as soon as we do this, we'll start assembling this, which is always fun. So we'll see how long we're going to do this live stream. We'll probably stop after everything gets mounted and put together unless you guys have a lot of questions towards the end of the live stream. And then otherwise I'll, I'll keep going if you guys have a lot of questions. Same thing with these boxes. They're gonna be at the very back of the van, so I don't want you to be able to look up on the van and see wires. So we're gonna keep these forward. And then everything's gonna come down the driver's side rail. one step closer to getting this thing put together. Answering that comment really quick, Nova. Let's see, it's not a bad thing, but was slightly. So yeah, the Flatline Vanco fairing, it's black ABS plastic. Uh, I don't, it's not a, it's not really a bad thing, but it will slightly warp during high heat. Um, and then it'll go back to normal when it's cool. Uh, you might, some people may never ever notice it. Uh, there's a way to adjust it so it's not so pronounced, but um, I mean, it's super light. It's very durable. It's about a quarter inch thick. So it has, it's not really, uh, quality it's just the nature of the plastic and putting on there so uh i thought i didn't like the metal of the version 1.0 because the they do have a version 1.0 you can buy a metal fairing from them um they do sell it but uh if you buy the 2.0 roof rack which i guess that might be all they're selling now i think they discontinued the 1.0 the 2.0 has the integrated fairing notches on the front of the roof rack. So I, I guess you have to go with the plastic. Um, and the structure of that fairing, it's a, 
it's all kind of a pain to put together. So, uh, yeah, I do. I do like this one. <laughs> I like this one a little bit better. Okay, let's get our hardware kits out and start turning some wrenches here. So. So we have a small, we have a skinny, thick washers. So let's see, let's uh, look at the instructions and find out how they want to do this. Oh, you got the metal fairing. Okay, cool. So, uh, so the one that's on the other van that I'm working on, we had I have the metal fairing too, which uh, I mean I think it looks good. I don't have any issues on it. Um, where was I? Okay. So let's go all the way down. How do they want to put this together? All right, so we have the spacers. So the quarter inch thick solar panel spacer. So the quarter inch thick is what they want us to use on the underside of the panel. With the channel going up. Okay. And the oversized washer. So let's, let's find that piece. They have two different sizes. I'll show you. I'll show you here real quick. So I need to look in the instruction because there's two different sizes, and uh, I'm not sure. I don't see the other one here yet in the instructions. Hmm. Quarter inch thick, okay, we got that. Where does the other one go? There's an eight inch spacer, but I don't see. So they give you a quarter inch and they give you an eighth inch spacer. It must just be maybe, maybe how you want to do it. It's not specific to anything. So we're going to use the quarter inch first and see where we get.
I don't want to lay this directly on the table, but uh, it is, uh, well, nah, it's okay. I was going to say it's kind of touching my foam that I have protected it on the bottom, kind of raising it up a little too high. I was excited, but this uh, it turned kind of tedious now because we gotta I gotta go through and hopefully I have a gear wrench that I can just ratchet these down super quick. Let's check out these hardware kits. So we've got, how many do they want us putting in here? One, two, three, four, six. So we're gonna have one on the ends and then we're gonna have one and then uh, two ends, one in the middle. It's showing to do it in the middle here, but we actually don't have, there's not a hole. So this hole is a grounding hole and it actually does not exist on the 200 watt panels, interestingly enough. Uh, I'm gonna get this bolted in and then I'm gonna drill. I'm gonna drill that out because I do want it in the middle. So, although you shouldn't have to do that, uh, I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you about a technique. So, what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a square, a metal square, and I'm gonna put it underneath it. So, when I drill, if I miss or move, it's not gonna damage the, uh, the solar panel.
We're not going to tighten these down all the way because we're going to just get it snug and then we're going to come back uh, and drill that hole. Also, if you guys are watching, if you want to put in the chat uh, a better time for evening live streams, right now I'm just kind of shooting for 6 o'clock, but I think maybe 7 might be better, Eastern Standard Time. Seems right when I get off of the live stream, there's a couple of questions that come through. So if you guys are watching right now, just put in the comments, you know, put a number, Eastern Standard Time to, uh, to the live stream time. So let's go ahead and get our drill out and let's drill this hole. So let's get a bolt so we can, uh, or the spacer so we can find out what size drill bit we need to use to drill this out. I'm gonna put you guys on a short break while I'm finding this drill bit.
Okay guys, we're back. Got our drill bit. So I'm using a quarter inch. I got a piece of uh, really thick aluminum sheet, piece of sheet metal. I'm gonna slide it underneath here so I don't mess up. That's enough to get the bolt through. Perfect. Now remember, before you put this on the roof, make sure you blow it off or take a vacuum to it. Uh, clean all that off. Pretty self-explanatory. And when you put this on, make sure that it's nice and tight to the uh, solar panel itself.
Now I'm flipping this panel over. Uh, it still has that aluminum on the inside of it, so I've got everything tightened down. I'm not going to be flipping this over again, hopefully. So I'm going to take out this foam so I don't embed it with the metal. <laughs> So we're going to go over the wiring of this, but we won't be wiring it up in this episode because it will take, it will take a long time to do that. and drill before we actually bolt that together. So this pack has one screw missing. Probably have an extra here somewhere. Always good to have extra parts. Actually, before I do that, one, two, let's set these aside. Let's open up the second pack, see if that was where the rest of them are. So we got one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight.
Hmm. Just organizing all the hardware right here because I think we're missing just a few pieces of bolt and a nut, maybe spacers. All right, we got our six bolts for this, and then we have four spacers left. Okay, so it looks like I'm gonna look one more time. I think we're short on hardware. All right, so we don't have enough hardware to do. We're gonna have to do this panel and this panel. There's nothing left to do these. So that's a bummer. All right, so we're just gonna move on and talk about the wiring. Okay. 
Okay, so we'll get some hardware tomorrow, but you guys have to look at the other video. <laughs> Doesn't see me finish that. It kind of stinks. All right, so we have six bolts here. We, we did what the instructions said, but now we've ran out of hardware. Um, Next thing, so let's go to the video. Let's kind of just fast forward this uh, live stream tonight. Uh, let's fast forward to this. So this is the, this is how everything is to be wired up. So when you have a solar panel array, you have of different panels, varying panel wattages. You can't directly all connect them together at the get go. If you see here at the end, we do have just two outputs, a positive and a negative. So we can do that at the end, but in the uh, beginning, we need to separate them before we combine them based on their wattage and amperage. So this video, I'm going to paste this video into, um, uh, So this is, uh, let's see here. Okay, so this is their video on how to wire these panels. So what, uh, what we're doing is we're taking the two 200 watt panels and we're gonna combine them. So combine the negatives. And then the, uh, after you combine those two, we'll take the second negative and we're gonna bring it all the way to our branch adapter. If you guys don't know what a branch adapter is, a branch adapter is Where'd it go? And it look like this right here. So depending on your setup, you have these guys. So you can have this. So this is two into one output. Um, there's other different varieties. So if you're not comfortable cutting and splicing the MC4 connector, you can buy these, which are a little bit more user friendly. They're flexible. Um, so this, let's see here. So these two do the exact same job. Just one is solid and then one is flexible. So this one is from Renogy. This one is from Bogue RV. That's on Amazon. So not sponsored, but there's two different types. So this is what's gonna allow you to take, for example, the first two 200 panel, 200 watt panels, you're gonna take them, so the first one, and then the second one, combine it, and then it comes out here. So that's what this drawing's showing you. Then once those are hooked into the uh, branch adapter here, you're gonna take, separately, you're gonna take the 255 watts combine them here on the negative, and then the positive leg is gonna come down and connect into the branch adapter just like the first one. So the two panels are combined, but only one positive is coming out. The 255 watts are combined, the one positive is coming out, and then finally with the 235 watts, same thing, combined, and only one positive coming out here. So they're independent when you're combining the panel, but they're combined at the end when you combine them as individual units. Um, then those are going to go into the uh, final branch adapter. So you have one negative coming out and one positive coming out. And then the, f uh, the last thing we're, you're going to do is let me 
fast forward this just a little bit. And then we're going to finish this off by putting two 10 amp fuses for the 55 and the 35 watt combination. And they look like this. This is what the, this is what the fuse looks like. So you're going to need two 10 and 120. So we got our 210 and our 120. And now this is going to go right before your final uh, combination. So if this, uh, for example, it's going to come into here and then I have a two, a two to one. I need to go buy a three to one. I just don't have one in the shop. But if you guys can imagine, if I had a three to one, you know, it would look something, I'm just making this up, but uh, it would look something like that. You got three going into one. And that's what you're gonna need to finish this up. And that way you're protected. Now, what I'm gonna do and this, I always do this. This is, per, this is uh, to protect you from the dead, uh, the solar panel doing a direct short on the roof. So this is your first line of defense. And then your second line of defense is gonna be, let me see if I can pull, uh, there we go. And your second line of defense is going to be this. So this is a dual pull, dual throw uh, breaker. And notice it's not just a positive, it's a positive and a negative. This is also really helpful and handy when you need to do maintenance on your solar panels. So if you need to turn or completely reset your power system, most systems you're going to want to wire this direct to your charge controller so that when the van's off and you're away, it's still charging your batteries while you're gone. That's what's really nice about having solar panels. Anyway, but this, if you can imagine, if you need to do a hard reset on your system, so whether you have like Renogy or Victron or Red Arc or something like that, uh, the, your solar panel is so robust now that there's gonna be enough power to keep everything running. And so you need something to actually cut it off so you don't have to physically disconnect the cables. And this is what you're gonna use. So if you guys are interested in this, uh, you can find this on our DIY van build cheat sheet. So this is a, uh, especially an Excel sheet that I put together for you guys. Um, it's completely free and it's designed to help you with building your DIY van conversion. It's an, uh, essentially an Excel sheet of over 250 curated items. These are my Amazon purchases from the last three years. That's basically what it is. But in here, if you wanted to go search, so just do like control F after you get it and you do breaker. And so do you see where it says uh, right here? We've got a uh, low voltage mini circuit breaker for solar panels. And so all we have to do is take this, we've got the Amazon link right over here. And if you guys can see, let me pull up here. Uh, boom, I'm coming down, there we go. So you can hover over, it'll show you the image. And now you can actually look at the part on the list very easy to look up so if I talk about something during the live stream it's pretty much going to be a part that's on that list if it's a new part it's something that I'll be adding to the list so really cool um, there's solar panel panels and all kinds of stuff on there too uh, and let's see let's see if I can find that box so it's HT box box here we go so there is this uh, ABS cover power distribution box. Okay, so see this box? This box is made to house this breaker. So it's on the list as well. And to find it, 
just go over here on the left side and see it's under electrical. Uh, but just do control F and then you can search for anything. You can do solar, you can do tools. Uh, you can type in crimper. You can type in MC4. Uh, you can type in, let's see what else. Uh, Max. Max fan. So it's really cool. Guess what? It's completely free. And all you got to do is go to vanbuilderhq.com or you can click on the link in the description below. Put your name and email address. Click download. It goes straight to your inbox and you guys can use it. Um, we're always updating the list, uh, so we um, got some more stuff coming on there. But uh, yeah, definitely check it out if you guys are interested. I think it'll really help you out. Back to this, we are, um, yeah, so that's how everything's going to be put together on the roof, as you can see. Um, so we're going to keep that all organized. Uh, yeah, a little bit of bummer that I ran out of. Tool, uh, tools guy. I wanted to get this finished. Uh, I'm still going to finish this up after I end the stream because I need to get the uh, <laughs> the thumbnail image for this uh, video. But um, yeah, if there's anybody that has any questions, uh, I'm going to be on here for about five more minutes and then we are going to call it for the live stream tonight. Before I sign off, I wanted to go over Odyssey Custom Vans. So that's my custom van conversion business. Our current build that is for sale is in this video right here to my right. And uh, we took it to Adventure Van Expo to show it off. So if you wanted to see a quick walkthrough of where it's at currently, we are finalizing the uh, plumbing system at the current moment. But in the meantime, we took a bunch of photos to show you uh, the overall theme and design of the van uh, from the Isotherm Cruise 130 fridge, the hidden in-floor shower pan, pull-out drawer slide, um, or the heavy-duty drawer slide in the back for putting your mountain bikes on. Uh, we got 420 watts of solar. This is that same box, so you can see how we've got the breaker and our individual solar panels put in here. Now, because this system will be going coming through as one system, we're going to be using one breaker. And uh, yeah, so that's, our, uh, that's what the van looks like. The German Shepherd is not included, but everything in the van is pretty awesome. Um, very proud of the design, aesthetics. Uh, if you guys do, if you are interested in purchasing purchasing this van, or if this van is still currently for sale uh, as of filming this, contact me at sales at odysseycustomvans.com. Um, you can also inquire about other vans that may be for sale at the time of filming as well. That's my phone number. The best way to get in touch with me is to click this link on the website. So it looks like this right here. Just click that link and schedule a time to do a consultation. Click on a time, a date, find a time. It'll go right onto my calendar. It's a really easy way to connect with me. If you're not interested in purchasing this van, but you'd like to have your own custom van built, over here on the left-hand side is a quick overview of how to prep for a phone consultation with me to discuss your personal van build. Same thing, select a date and a time, and you can hop on a call with me, and uh, we'll talk about your future build. But yeah. Check that out. Check out the DIY Van Build Cheat Sheet. And uh, if you guys, uh, oh, all right, Michael. So where can you get the solar panels from? Good question. So you can get them from uh, Explorers.Life's website. So no affiliation here, but let's go to their website and I'll show you how to buy it. Now, it's important that you go to this website because, uh, so here you go. So here it is, explorus.life, right? Go here, this is their website. You wanna go here because these panels are specific to this roof rack if you are interested in actually purchasing this roof rack. So 
Um, and their website has a bunch of ads, so I'm trying to <laughs> I'm trying to cover this up with my screen here. Um, so you're going to go to shop. Then you're going to go to uh, where, how where was it? Shop electrical no shop components solar panel. All right. And then you're going to go to these are what you want to get. So you need to get the 200 watt. So you need two of the 200 watt panels. 255 and 235. And the reason I say to go to his website, they're going to come from Rich Solar. I don't think they actually ship them. Um, actually, I can confirm that really quick by looking on the box. Yeah, so they come directly from Rich Solar, so I'm just assuming they're drop shipped. But I wouldn't buy them off of Amazon or anything like that because the reason is these two, the 55 and the 35 especially, are custom panels. So if I were you, I would go to his website. The price is no different. Um, but go there go there, and you get two of the 200s and then two 35s, two 55s, so that you can have this setup if you're, you're interested. So that's where to get these panels from. If you buy the Anaka... Uh, if you buy this, this is the addition that we have. Um, the roof rack comes with all the mounting hardware that you need, <laughs> minus what we were uh, lacking tonight. Um, so we'll just we'll just have to pick up some more hardware. That's okay. Um, yeah, but this is the roof rack, and this is his website where you want to get the panels from or purchase them from and then this is the video that I linked in the description or the chat where you can actually get the solar panels from uh, I'm gonna copy this link for the solar panels I can type. Okay, so there's their website link in the chat. All right. All right, guys, if you don't have any more questions, that's going to be it for this live stream. I need to get some more hardware to finish this up. So this is the last video uh, going over these panels. Uh, we pretty much covered everything from... The mounting, how everything is going to be arranged, how we're going to be doing our wiring. We also reference the video so that you guys know where to go to actually fuse and wire everything together. Uh, as far as going forward, it's really simple. What we're going to do is there is two T-nuts over here, two T-nuts over there. These T-nuts will go into the 80-20 track. The solar panel will lay down in it. You'll just bolt it to the rack you'll come over here do the next one and then come over here and then take these they will be one unit you'll just put that in um, as far as wiring goes you want to unsnap this and unsnap this and kind of have it hanging over the rail to help you you know do some cable management same thing here you're going to just want to keep it loose um, what's nice is you have this space here um, now I'm not going to, I'm going to put, uh, the first panel up there, 
But what I need to do now, since now that I have all the panels, I'm going to put the first two. I'm going to draw my line, and uh, I'm going to look at where my max span location is. And then once I define where that's going to be, then I will finish installing these. So that's why I'm not doing everything in all in one video. You'll have to wait till the final video comes out. Um, that way we can put it, everything together in one clean video. So, because we still have to cut out the hole for the Max Van, and we still have to cut out the hole for the Nomadic Cooling X2 unit. So, the first two panels can go in and just kind of hang it up there. I like to do that just so they don't get, you know, damaged while we're building stuff in the shop. But these two panels will, uh, We'll hide them away safely while we uh, wait for the other two components to come in. Um, the Max Fan will be the last thing that goes in because the X2, and this is just from builder experience. So you could put everything on the roof, connect it, and then try to saw and drill and stuff like that, but you need space to work so that stuff is not getting metal shavings and stuff like that all over the place. So it's kind of, uh, as I build, I work on one project, I pause. You have to really be able to multitask pretty well with this uh, <laughs> van building. So half of this is going in. We're going to pause. X2 is going to come in. We're going to get that installed, cleanly, done 100%, because there's only one place that the, uh, this AC unit can go. Once that's in, uh, We'll see where we can uh, have some adjustment for the fan. Um, uh, the current customer we're working with, we'd like to have the fan up here, so close to this, so just a little bit of an adjustment, if possible. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do that, but we're going to try. Um, just, a, just a couple of inches up here. And then, um, yeah, from there, we will... Get that put in, get this put in, and then once the air conditioner and the max fan have their home, they're sealed up and ready to go, we're going to clean the whole entire roof off. We'll come back with our self-leveling lap sealant. We'll coat all everything on the roof. We'll co coat our holes we drilled for the wires going, the solar panel wires going through the roof. So we'll put that in because um, we want everything needs to be clean. No aluminum, dust, uh, no steel shavings from when we cut out the holes. Clean roof. Then we'll lap seal, seal everything, do some lap sealant. Uh, then we'll put the solar panels uh, all back in the roof. Then we'll be done with the roof. So that's the, that's the right way to do it. Um, you don't want to do double work. So that's our approach. But yeah, look forward to the video where I show, I'll be putting the front fairing on, we'll be doing the air conditioning, the Dometic, I mean the Max Fan <laughs> Dometic, Nomadic Cooling X2, Max Fan, and Solar. Uh, so we'll cover behind the scenes, and that will be a wrap on the roof. And the cool thing is, after you do that, all you gotta do is work on the inside of the van, or we'll be cutting out the windows, and then it just kind of goes windows, then we'll go down to the floor, then we'll put in the interior paneling. Um, well, we'll do our insulation first, interior, interior paneling, and then, uh, but you guys will see the whole process. So stick around, stay tuned for future live streams. But if you guys are not already subscribed to the channel, get subscribed to Van Builder HQ. Always have cool videos coming out. Make sure you guys like this video if you enjoyed it. Share it to anybody that is doing a roof rack ins installation or they're putting solar panels on their roof um, and may need some help uh, laying everything out, especially like this uh, system. And then, uh, yeah, that's it. If you guys don't have any other questions, we are going to call it a night, and we'll look forward to uh, chatting with you in our future live stream.